Welcome back to my channel. I am back in the studio today. I don't have to be out in the carport or the garage because uh, I'm no longer throwing paint around even though at the end of this video there are a couple of splatters going on here and there but I did uh, manage to get away with them without getting in too much trouble. Now today you'll see that I'll be working predominantly on the face even though there are some highlights still getting painted on her hair. There I did paint over those couple of strands that I really did want to include into the painting because I thought that really um, shaped her face really really well. Now you may have noticed at the start of the painting I was painting the underglaze of my subject's face in an antique white and the reason for that is I really hate leaving any part of the canvas unpainted even though I was going to paint this fleshy colour which is just a little bit of um, what is the colour that I used I think it was um, not too complicated all it was was a little bit of burnt sienna dark that I mixed with a little bit of that antique white and now I'm going to move over to a little bit of medium yellow and as you can see there I'm just painting over the top of the strands just to be able to start to make that hair give it a little bit more interest in it and really bring out those highlights Now I don't know if you've been following along but this is actually the fourth video I've made of this particular painting so if you'd like to go back and have a look at the previous videos I will link them in the description below. And as for the brushes that I'm using here I'm just using a 15mm flat brush which is quite versatile I can use the edges, the flat, also for the face I use a filbert brush and also a detailed brush or just a round brush. Now I did say earlier that it was burnt sienna dark but it's actually raw sienna dark and that is all I'm using and a little bit of that uh, antique white which is a Matisse colour and they're uh, no affiliate to me but uh, I do love their uh, colours, they're so strong and um, they just don't need to be uh, really watered down at all, they're just such a beautiful pigment, the Matisse and I think they're an Australian brand, don't quote me on it, maybe um, Maybe uh, Matisse does sound French, something like that, but I'm pretty sure that they're an Australian brand. And uh, here I'm just starting to really paint in all the highlights. And as you can see, I've, I have overworked this face. Um, to be honest, I did have some dramas with it. It was to a point that my reference photo was actually black and white. So all this was pretty much just made up out of my imagination. And I had to sort of just look at what was the darker parts of the um, black and white reference photo and then just pretty much make up my own, uh, my own color scheme. So which was, by the way, a little bit of Indian red, um, Mars black for the uh, carbon black, I should say, and also um, the raw sienna dark. And that was all pretty much mixed all together for the highlights of the eyebrows. And now I'm just using that for a little bit of her eye shadow around her eyes. Now I've just done a little bit of Googling and yes, Matisse is definitely an Australian brand, uh, Matisse Structure, and apparently it's one of the most um, respected paints uh, around the world. So that's great to know that an Australian brand is out there and kicking goals. So I've decided on some cerulean blue for her eyes and as I said earlier it was a black and white uh, reference photo so I had to google her and have a look at some coloured photos of my subject to see what colour her eyes actually were and uh, I was pleased to find that they're actually blue anyhow. So if you can recognise who I'm actually trying to paint here that'd be fantastic. Make a comment and see if you can guess who, who it is. It is one of our Australian uh, iconic pop princesses and uh, absolutely had an absolute, I've still got a crush on her now and I can say that, I can say that because even though I'm happily married I've got a crush on this, uh, this iconic pop princess from Australia and uh, I know I could get away with that because my wife often tells me she would uh, leave me in a heartbeat for Rob Thomas out of Matchbox 20 so I have absolutely no, um, no worries about saying how much I uh, adore this lady. Anyway, let's get back to the painting and uh, as you've seen there I've started to put the highlights in already. Now you might have seen, may have seen that I painted her eyeball and it's a lot of trial and error. But I do have to say one of the great things I love about acrylic paints is if you're not getting it or you're not feeling it, you can always go back and repaint over it. 
in a very short time frame. Uh, oil, I'm not going to bag it out. I love oils, don't get me wrong. They're so fantastic to use. But with acrylics, if you do happen to make a mistake, you really only have to wait a good five minutes and then they are already starting to dry and then you can go and repair. As you can see, I was putting the highlights in there. I hated the, uh, I didn't like the way it was turning out. So again, I've just painted over the top of her eyeball and now I'm gonna start putting those highlights in again. And as we're speaking about the highlights, I'm actually using titanium white and I find that the most brilliant white for general use because it does reflect about 97% of any other light. So it really does give that great light catching appearance. And for around the edges of the eye, I'm just using carbon black and that does blend back into the blue, which does give it that realism look. And for her lips, now I'm going to move into, uh, again, the cerulean blue, but it just, to me, was a little bit too out there, even though I've got this amazing background. Uh, I just thought I might mix in a little bit more Indian red and the carbon black, just to be able to give her that... Uh, I don't know, not a gothic look, but let's just say a little bit more depth to her lips. And just so there's no confusion, as I'm using a couple of different brands during this painting, uh, the cerulean blue I used was an Atelier Interactive. Now I started to really struggle with her face. I just felt I got bogged down too much in the realism detail. And I really wanted to break free of that um, that control, that control that you need to have when you want to do a realism piece. You have to make sure everything's spot on. So I started to add a few more out there drips over her face, around some white around the outside of the jawline, and I even started to add a little bit of blue, and as you can see, here's some splatters. And then I just thought, well, I'm gonna start to just add some pink, some more runs, and just to really free myself up a little bit from that realism look that can be a little controlling. And for me personally, I like how people like John Beckley and some other great artists on YouTube can really get these awesome looking portraits happening. Sort of like, or not a realism portrait, but almost like a, not so much an anime, but more of a comic look, but yet they just look absolutely brilliant. And that's kind of the look I was going for with this painting. I didn't want to be bogged down in the detail too much. So even though I may get some comments saying how they hated the drips going over her face, I really felt it just freed me up enough to be able to really give that vibe of um, happy times back in the 80s, 90s, 2000s, where you know the, the disco times are great. It's just a, a happy time to be alive. And if you think that someone could benefit from this painting, please share me around. And as I always like to say, happy painting.